We'd like to take you on a tour where we're talking about how we planned and implemented our North American Global Goals project. I'd like to point out that this is something that my colleague, Dr. Eva Brown of Red River College and I put together. And we worked with our students who are pre-service students. And we're trying to engage them in the concept of, and, and the activity of global collaboration. The goals that we had were, first of all, we wanted them to have an experience and, and consider global collaboration as a teacher. In other words, they're, they're actually creating things that they're going to be using with students uh, to do global collaboration. Secondly, we wanted to give them the opportunity to do it as a student. What is the actual process of going through and working with somebody in another country about a, an important project that you're, you've developed? And thirdly, we wanted them to experience and, and research the concept of global goals. Engaging global goals is an important aspect because it really is a plan that has been accepted by every country on the planet to work towards a better, better world. We wanted to make this an inquiry-based learning project. So we used the pro process that was identified and, and is used, it's called Focus on Inquiry in Canada. It's an important process where students look at things conceptually, they do research and development, and they then find ways in which they can share it. The ISTE standards obviously were part of the process. We wanted to make sure that uh, students would look at this as digital citizens, where they're working with other people online. We're looking at knowledge constructors. They're looking and researching and finding information and building their own knowledge base as well as sharing with others. The creative communicator is how that they would be actually taking the materials and the information that they have and finding ways in which they could creatively share it with others. And finally, of course, we have the global collaborator. The global collaboration is where students use digital tools to work in teams that are both global and local. We began by creating groups. We decided that we were going to create six four-person intercampus groups. This would mean that the students would actually have to work with each other from a distance so that they could create their final project. We organized them based upon their majors and their common interests, and this seemed to work out quite well. <clears throat> the collaboration process was that we were going to begin by assigning the groups. We then we did a, an initial uh, class Zoom meeting, but then we had each of the groups do their own initial Zoom meeting with each other, and at that point they, they would get to know themselves, each other, they would connect with their, um, their contact information, and they would identify the, the leader and then the other group members that they needed. They needed an expediter, they needed a scheduler, they needed a technology person. Um, this is a way in which they could make it so that they could work collaboratively for a final product. The, um, they then would work on, on discussing and researching their global goals. This is a process where they would go out and find the materials and the information that they needed and bring it back together to create their final product. And then the key part, and the most difficult part, was scheduling meetings. Students in Canada, students in the U.S., they've got many things that they're doing in life, and some of them <clears throat> did have real issues in trying to connect, but that was part of the process. We had lots of tools that they were using. WhatsApp it was the main tool that they used where they were, they were actually communicating with each other in a uh, textual manner. But they used Zoom, they used Doodle for uh, organizing their scheduling, they had Google Calendar, they had a whole variety of things that they were using. Um, we used Zoom as a class, but they also used it on an individual basis because this provided a very powerful tool for them to use and collaborate. Our group process was that they would start and they'd meet with their group and then they would research their SDGs. Um, they wanted to select that goal, which is something that they all agreed upon as being important. Um, they came up with their ideas to what they wanted to do and they proposed it to the professors. We would sit down with them and we would refine it so it would be something that was workable and, and quite exciting. They would then develop their plan and how they would assess the way things are being done in each of their countries. Because one of the things we were doing is we were looking at comparisons between the way things are done in different countries. And then finally, they assigned responsibilities for each other and did it. The schedule was a five week long schedule. We had weekly themes that were based upon the inquiry process that we were using. Uh, weekly updates were s submitted to the professors. Uh, these were questions that the 
leaders of each group would answer on a weekly basis so that we would keep track as to what they're accomplishing, what were their accomplishments, what were their, their barriers, and how could we help them. That was a very important aspect. We had deadlines for the leaders on what had to be done in their groups as they were going through it. We had deadlines for the reflections that the students did because we had them do individual reflections so we could also find out about how they are working on this. Um, we began with a, a, a classroom Zoom where everybody got to meet everybody. The projects actually came in two flavors. The first one was that students were challenged to create lesson plans and resources to create a learning experience about one of the goals. This is one where they were working as a teacher, and as a teacher they would identify the goal that they wanted and they would create a whole lesson learning experience. The other option was that they could actually pretend that they were the students. And what they were doing is they actually had a, a, a learning process where they would go through and they would create something based as being a student. They weren't creating the lesson plan, but they were doing having the experience. This provided both options. Some of the things that we came up with were just fantastic. Here's How's Your Health. This was a, a lesson on, on the seven dimensions of wellness. And if we go out and take a look, you'll see that there is a whole variety of processes that they went through. You'll be able to access these if you click on the links that are in the original document that sent you here. They talk about how the people would get involved, uh, learning engagement goals. This was a, a very complete process. We had one here. This was uh, what's happening. This was life below the water. This was an amazing one because they were looking at pollution and the issues that people ran into. And it was something where they were even looking for experts. And uh, they found an expert in, in uh, pollution in Hawaii, and he was working with them on this. This was an exciting process. As I said, you may want to go take a look. This is a project where students from both Red River College and the University of Northern Iowa found out about how sustainability was being addressed at their schools. And they interviewed the sustainability leaders at each of them and did a great comparison as to what they do how they do it, and what their plans were for the future. Sustaining the World One Project at a Time was one where they were working on responsible consumption and production. This is one where they identified authentic problems and came out with ways in which they could address those. The Butts on Bikes Project was a project where they did a comparison between the way cycling is being supported both on the Red River campus and at the University of Northern Iowa. They found that at the Red River campus, they have a bicycle shop that they use to support their students transporting themselves around on two wheels rather than four. At the University of Northern Iowa, there are a number of bicycle shops around throughout the Cedar Valley. In Waterloo, there is a Bicycle Collective, which is a nonprofit organization founded on building community through bicycle. I mean, that's what it's all about, getting people on their bikes, right? Getting butts on bikes, that's what we do. Stay lost, never found, out on the streets, in the book of the dead, for a living. Stay long. Pretty amazing, isn't it? An interesting aspect is that when the video producer at the Red River College went through his classes the next semester, he and his colleagues could use what they had created here for creating an actual curriculum that they were going to be using in the classroom. This is an example of international experiences really paying off. What we're trying to do, our goal is to engage our students in a globally collaborative project where they have addressed authentic issues. The sustainable development goals were part of this and they worked with peers to create an authentic learning experience. We wanted them to co connect and we wanted them to connect to the world so that they would have this rich opportunity to become part of a rich learning environment and that they would be able to use this in their future classrooms. Thank you for allowing us to share this information about our project and remember, connect with the world. <laughs> Thank you.